We can start. Okay, so. All right, so what uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the pathology project. And so if nobody has questions right now, um, um, that I just want to go through what I would like to do as a video um, voiceover. <clears throat> if you do have questions, you know, ask now or later is okay too. I can stay after the class a little bit. <clears throat> hmm, sorry about that. I can stay after the class a little bit um, if you want, or also be available on pronto or on uh, texting back and forth. You should, I did give feedback on the presentations that were uploaded uh, or that I could figure out how to get to uh, through emails and uh, through the uploads. I did a lot of that this morning. Uh, please make sure to see if you kept feedback. If I missed it or so, please involve me. Uh, then somehow I must not have seen it and, and, and shoot me a text or upload it on Pronto or something like that, that I can look at it if you'd like feedback. If you also like more feedback than what I gave you or clarifications, just please reach out so we can work on it a little bit more together. Um, but again, what I've seen so far, a lot of them are really, really cool presentations. I'm really happy with with what you put on from the world perspective. Um, yeah, go ahead. Catherine. I'm sorry. So for the pathology project, I wasn't able to uh, upload the PowerPoint and the document. Like I have one that's just PowerPoint and then I have one of what I'm saying in each slide. Oh, see that? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. How okay. do you, re yeah, how I do you resubmit the... that? Uh, how to resubmit? I think you just upload it again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it, it should let you upload multiples and otherwise just you can just also reach out to me directly on text or something if you want to do it that way. Okay, thank you. Or an email and then I can take a look on that angle. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, no, the text looks really good. I just didn't see the slides. That was all on that one. So, um, no, a lot of very good work. And so you guys spend a little bit more time doing that. And then afterwards, uh, we're going to um, make a video voiceover with it. Um, and I think the suggestion that was brought earlier with making making a group Zoom recording, I think, is, is what we should do. Uh, that's what I'd like you guys to do as a group. Uh, each person speaks. Let me actually just share my screen and go to that thing here. Where is it? I think here. Modules. I know I'm already already tired. I've been doing this since five in the morning. It's like crazy stuff. All right, here we go. Video presentation. That's this week's um, upload. Um, so yeah, again, a lot of very good work. I want you to do a little bit more work on your presentation from a perspective of like, you know, how's it flow when you try to speak it out, you try to lecture it. So that's what I've written in here. And then I want you to do a video of about two to three minutes, nothing bigger than that. I want you to keep the whole thing to 10 minutes or less because we can actually teach a lot in a short period, number one. And number two is anything longer than 10 minutes, everybody will fall asleep. Um, unfortunately, it becomes just kind of boring and draggy. But the way I want you guys to do it is what you do here. You come, uh, you, you come to the Zoom room and what I do is I record the Zoom and I um, share my screen with you. So the two things you need to know from a technology perspective, or at least one in the group needs to, is how to share a screen and how to do a video, I mean, a, a, a recording of it. And so you can make a video out of it. Um, and then um, you can do that either through a Canvas, through a Zoom account that you have personally because then you can actually just do the video and then upload the video uh, for me one in the, one of the group should upload the video um this this um, assignment i do not have as a group assignment anymore so just have one of the group upload the video and then um, i can take a look from there and then we'll take it from that end if you if you go through the home button you can see here you could go through the home button you see my screen right Everybody, somebody, you see my yes, stuff? Yes. Okay, yes, yes. you can go through the Zoom study link and go through there and make a video from there. Uh, then the thing is that video just comes to me. 
it doesn't come to you, but then I can take it from the back and upload the video. You just have to give me an indication um, on the assignment in there in the text box that you finished the video and if I could you know, upload it. That's the only tricky thing that I've thought of uh, if we do it that way. But, but, but that way, should everything should be pretty straightforward, I think. Um, um, and hopefully we can create that without too many technical difficulties. What do you guys think about that? Any thoughts? Well, good. If something come up, you know, food for thoughts, just please reach out. I'm in the process of creating this and it's a little bit of a, you know, interesting thing doing everything online, uh, but we do the best we can and um, have some fun with that. So again, reach out if you have questions. Otherwise, I assume you guys kind of know what I want from you um, uh, for the next step, making that video presentation. Okay, then this week, I want to actually go through two weeks because next Monday, I am not available to do a Zoom recording or do a Zoom class. I'm out of town. Um, and so I want to cover two weeks today and then ha have no Zoom next week. I'm still available, you can still text me and I do stuff in the background. I can even meet with you guys uh, uh, if necessary. Uh, just I'm not there Monday um, um, through that week. Um, so we can have that next uh, Monday. But this week we are gonna, uh, well, how is the brain for you guys? How did you like that stuff? What, 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 did you learn something? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was good. Good information, I felt like. Yeah, no, it's some interesting stuff. I mean, it's somewhat complicated, um, you know, to go through it all. And, and, and keep in, in mind when you go through the material, always know that at the end, um, at the end here, at the last chapter, the test, make sure you print out the stuff in the test review. That way, you know exactly what I want from you on the test. And you can just kind of hopefully someone enjoy learning the material without being afraid that you need to memorize everything. Um, I hope that uh, you keep that in mind. So go always go back to the test review if it gets overwhelming. Um, because it is a lot of stuff and we're gonna continue with the spine. I mean, actually with the brain neurology stuff, but now we're gonna get into the spinal cord and the autonomic nervous system. And then as a second chapter this week, we're gonna close it out with the special senses. And so as we did the brain, um, which is, you know, the stuff on top, now we get into the spinal cord um, that sort of connects then the brain with the rest of the body as it reaches down from the brain stem down all the way to about L2 here. Uh, lumbar vertebra and then from there it just fizzles out and we have all these nerves that come out and then connect to the body um, and you know make the brain be able to communicate with the body when we look at a cross section of the spinal cord so we cut through it and we and we see one level uh it's interesting in the brain you kind of have that that gray matter on top and then the white matter in the in the inside in the middle and the white matter is all the cables is the it's it's the fatty stuff around the cable that insulates the, the axons um, um in the spinal cord it's the opposite you have the white matter sort of around and these are cables and tracks going up and down the spine and then on the inside you have cell body stuff that's more gray matter uh, in sort of a butterfly they call that a butterfly looking appearance it's kind of interesting if that's really a butterfly or not um, but that's um, uh, on the inside then where the cell bodies are and on the outside, on the outside portion here is the cables going up and down that they call those tracts, uh, those cables that connect then the brain with the body. Um, nerves come in uh, uh, from the from the back as that when you look at the spine, the brain and the spinal cord, and all that neurology functioning, you always think of information going in from the body, the brain coordinates things and, and thinks about it and then information going out uh, uh, of the brain to the body make sure stuff reacts to what needs to be adapted to uh, 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 in, in, in there and all of the nerves that go to to from the brain out they communicate with other nerves or with muscles or with glands and I always want to keep that in mind as well and so when we then look at a cross section of the spinal cord 
we have a back portion here, the posterior or dorsal part, and a front portion here. And on the inside, the back, the, the butterfly sort of thing has a, 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 a back portion here that are cell bodies for information that comes into the spinal cord. So all the stuff that happens back here in the back part is information going into the brain and spinal cord from the body. And then anything that happens here in the front part is information going out from the brain and the spinal cord to the body. And so on a spinal cord level, things are pretty nicely organized in that fashion. And so we're gonna either talk a little bit about that and then we're gonna have a, a, a little bit of a discussion of how these tracts on the inside are organized. You can see we have here a blue one is an information going in to the brain. So this is input information. And then the red one is the output information going out uh, from the uh, brain to the body. We kind of look at this like uh, in the shower, you, you know, you hold, you hold the water, you hold a hand under the water and you feel how warm the temperature is. And so that's the information going in. And if it's like hot, obviously then the uh, muscles here will retract the hand so you don't burn yourself. And so that will be the information going out. Um, information going in is always a three neuron situation because we go from the body into the spinal cord and up the spine into the brain and at the brain level we go to the thalamus first and then from the thalamus we carry the information on to the cortexes to the cortices and the thalamus is sort of a relay station where everything gets organized when we look at the information going out from the brain to the body it is always a two nerve situation so two neurons that talk to one another and then you know from 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 the brain you get to the cord level and then from the cord level you get to the muscle wherever you need to go or the gland and so that's kind of interesting how you know we, we got to kind of look at the bigger picture how things are organized in there and then you know if you if, if we then go further to the different tracts we have examples of motor tracts uh, that go out and examples of sensory tracts uh, that bring information in and when you look at the wording, it's very interesting. When you look at these, these collections of axons, these tracts, they label them, they, they name them by the origin and end, beginning and end point. And so when you look, for example, here you see spinal cerebellar tract, you know that tract goes from the spine to the cerebellum. And so you kind of have a guide there of, of, of how the mapping is, is, is done. They don't all sound like that. You see the Y columns, that is, that is a different uh, description that doesn't really mean anything. But here again, you see spinal thalamic tracts. So you know that goes from the spine to the thalamus. Um, and so those are kind of you know, generalizations that I kind of want to talk a little bit about it. Um, and then, and then here you see corticospinal, you know, that goes from the cortex to the spine. So even in the word, you can kind of make sense and say, oh, that must be a motor tract because it goes from the brain to the spine, to the body, not from the spine up into the brain, which would be a sensory tract. And so, you know, that, that, that you go through that stuff, look at it from an inches perspective. I'm not going to have too many um, data points for the test from this chapter make sure you go to the test review and review what is on the test and then in this chapter also we talk a little bit about reflexes like you know when you go to the doctor and they hit your kneecap the patella and your knee comes up that's a reflex a lot of our body is organized in reflexes so it's interesting to learn that a little bit at the generalization of reflexes though again is like is like information in integration information out that's really uh, how, how the neurology always works. It's just then the question is how complicated is the integration? Is it a whole math problem or is it just, you know, straightening out the leg because, because um, the doctor hit the patella there? Uh, that's reflexes. And then we talk a little bit about plexi, not too much. There's some different plexuses. Or we have four of them. We have one here and then we have in the neck, a cervical. We have the big one, the brachial. And this, what this is, is basically is an is a organization of information going in and out of the spine. And so you, a plexus is there to make sure, for example, in the muscles of the arm that we have 
energy we have axons from different levels that will go to one muscle in the arm uh, and become one nerve at the end uh, of coming out. So when you look at the plexus, you, you see which levels of the spine uh, uh, you, you look at and, 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 and you rearrange these spinal levels into individual nerves and you assure through that process that each nerve has energy from multiple levels. And that is very important because if you go have a muscle, a nerve go to a muscle, like let's say the biceps, and you have that be from one level and you have an injury at that one level, you're going to completely lose the function of the biceps. But if you actually have energy from multiple levels and you have like one disc herniation, for example, you can still have a functioning biceps, maybe not as functioning, but you still have some function with it. And so that's why we have these plexi and we have them in the, in the neck a, a little going into the shoulder, then the brachial goes into the upper extremity and then the lumbosacral goes into the lower extremity. And you see how, you know, the big nerve here is the sciatic nerve. You can always see that that thing is huge. Anyway, that's plexi. And then we will have a discussion on cranial nerves. And cranial nerves are simply nerves that come out of the head, out of the brain. Uh, lots of them are uh, have things, simple sensory functions like smell, vision, uh, or of course also sensation. But everything that happens in in the head face area is 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 done with cranial nerves. So we have twelve of them. Just go through them. It's it's interesting. Again, you don't have to memorize all of these little names and these numbers and so forth. Um, but I want you to learn as much as you can from an interest perspective. And then we have a little bit of a time. We're gonna do the autonomic nervous system, and so that's the automatic stuff, and that's where you feel the sympathetic and the parasympathetic comes into play, the fight or flight nervous system or the rest and digest. These two sort of extremes to either have the body be in a situation of urgency, of attention, of being able to, to, to be part of the world or be in a, in a situation where we, where, we, where we rejuvenate our energies, which, which is the parasympathetic. I think this is a very interesting chapter maybe for us to learn more like how, you know, fast paced we go through life and how we're always in the sympathetic meeting to be always paid attention because we drive and all that stuff is so hyper and where we can maybe learn to also realize we need to have time to relax. We need to give our body rejuvenation time. And so this is where this is a discussion in the nervous system level. It's very interesting stuff. It's very interesting stuff. Good, so that's number one. And then the next chapter is really cool, I think, because it's, it's the sensory nervous system. So here we, we talk briefly about the, um, about the general types of receptors, how the information comes in to the system, because you've got to figure out how the heck you're going to have temperature become a nerve signal. Or, you know, and so there's a little bit of a discussion there, but then we very fast go uh, into vision and talk about uh, what, what, what vision is and how vision works, a bit of the eyeball and how it looks on the inside. But then also we're gonna talk a bit, oh, and look at the muscles. There's multiple muscles move the eyeball. That's kind of cool. But then we talk briefly about how actually light changes the chemical structure of, um, of the retinal molecule, and then that fires off the impulse that we see. So that's pretty neat. Um, I want you to go through that a little bit. And then problems with vision, we do the Snellen chart a little bit. We talk a little bit about that because we will do an exercise where you guys do your own vision, a little screening thing. And then, we briefly talk about the visual pathway. What's interesting about vision, I always thought it was funny that we see here and then in the back is like the movie theater where the, where the picture gets projected in the occipital cortex. But we have to, we, we briefly talk, you know, what's the pathway. And then the other thing that's interesting about the eye is like, how do we create three dimensions? How do we have overlapping visual fields that then we can see depth, percep depth perception? So that's where the organization comes in, that part of the nerve going into the brain has to cross over and get projected onto the, onto the occipital lobe or overlaid with the picture from the other eyeball. And then 
that gives us three-dimensional vision. So that's kind of interesting how the body has to organize that. Visual pathways, accessory structure, we've got to make sure we can cry and we have eyebrows and lashes and all that stuff. And so that's, in, that's good. And then we go into hearing. Um, and hearing is also really cool. Hearing and balance is sort of together. And now we're going back to this Petrus portion of the skull on the inside that you had to study. Um, and that's where we have the hearing apparatus in, in there carved out. And so that's kind of interesting uh, how that, I mean, that's to me is phenomenal that the body actually could do that. And, and when it comes to hearing, then, then the rest is the ear needs to bring the sound waves to eardrum and then the eardrum vibrates and the bones here vibrate onto this inner ear part. So this is the middle ear, this is the outer ear, and then this is the inner ear. Oh, here, it says it here. And then, and then in there, what's really, really cool is, let me find that, no, here it was, inner ear. In there, what you have is you have this snail looking thing and each, on each level, you have three chambers, the upper and the middle and the lower chamber. And the sound waves vibrate. And oh, and the thing is this snail changes, changes its, 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 its diameter as it gets closer to the top. And depending on how the sound wave structured, how the sound moves, it will hit a wall. And where it hits the wall, then the sound wave will cross over from the upper chamber to the middle chamber. And in the middle chamber, you have hairs little hair sticking out onto a membrane. Let's see if I have a bigger one. Yeah, see here, these little hairs. And when that membrane vibrates, these hairs shake. And when they shake, they fire a nerve up and we can hear. And so that's kind of really interesting uh, how fundamentally simple it actually is, but it gets very complicated, obviously, because hearing is really an interesting kind of, you know, um, sense to have. Thank God we can do that. Uh, and so here you kind of get the, the way that the frequency has to be coded to, according to how wide the diameter is here. And depending on, you know, where that is, it will cross over actually from up here to down here. And then, and then once the sound waves cross over the middle and, and vibrate those hairs, they get all dissipate into the lower chamber. And then from there, they just kind of like puff out into the middle ear and the, the wave is lost from that perspective then. So that's really cool how that works. And the thing is, equilibrium actually works very similar to that. Um, equilibrium works very similar, but we have, um, you know, when you think about balancing, you have a, a, an equilibrium uh, on three directions, forward, upwards, and sideways. So these are all these little, these, um, these little, um, <clears throat> what's my, what's my word, the semicircular canal they are called. And so they can code for angular acceleration, deceleration. And so when you, when you turn around, for example, and, and you're spinning around your own axis, you will, you will, you will the, the head will move different or the inside on the head, you have, a, a, sorry, you have a little gel laying over over hairs and and those that gel structure is a little delayed of how it moves compared to the to the rest uh, of the body and then that delay will fire make make the, the 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 hair bend and that bending will fire the nerve up and then we code that in the brain as in circular motion or up and down or do cartwheels or also up and down and forward acceleration deceleration that's another one that's also coded in there so that's really interesting. So that's this, the three semicircle canal go for angular motion and the two fluid filled pouches, they go for um, forward up, up and down and forward and backwards motion. That's interesting stuff. But again, fundamentally quite simple. You have hairs that bend and then that fires the nerve off. Then you, off, then you just have to organize everything around it. And it's like, how are, those hairs laid in the body uh, that then make a difference. And then that's where gravity comes back in. And so this is, this is kind of cool stuff. And then we'll finish up, oh, the hearing loss. I didn't talk about the hearing loss. That's also kind of interesting because when you actually look at hearing loss, it can either have a hearing loss that's, that's in the conduction of the sound waves. That's either, you know, you have wax in your ear and the sound waves can't get there. Or you have, for example, um, uh, arthritis in the little bones over time. That can be a hearing loss as we get older. 
or you can have a hearing loss where you have it in the nerve conduction in the whatever not the conduction whatever happens inside the nerve once the wave gets to the gets to the cochlea gets to be made into a into a, 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 the sound wave into a nerve energy and so you can you can you can test that by having a tuning fork go through the air and so you test the conduction how that sound wave gets to the ear or and then you see is one side worse than the other side or do you actually hear nothing and then what you do after that is you put the tuning fork onto the bone and if the bone vibrates and you can still then hear then you know it's not a neurological hearing loss because the vibration goes through the bone conduction into the nerve and activates the nerve and not through the air I know it's a little complicated how I explain that, but I think that's really, really cool how we can make sense of, 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 of anatomy and physiology of understanding that and then have a test out of it that, that can guide us in diagnostics of you know, what kind of hearing loss do we have. And I went to the hearing doctor uh, and they still, he did that. That was his primary test to figure out, you know, and then, and then of course they got into all the equipment to really test the hearing subtly but fundamentally he started with that so that was kind of interesting anyway i want you to learn about that a little bit and then i want you to learn a little bit about taste spots uh, we have <clears throat> different tastes we have sweet salty sour bitter and umami umami is a beefy taste that's an msg type stuff uh, and everything else that we actually pick up in terms of what we call this food tastes good is smell. Um, and we can, of course, detect, <coughs> sorry, a gazillion odors, not as many as an other animals can, but still we can detect a gazillion of odors. Um, and that goes, uh, of course, through olfaction, which is in the nose. So that then will finish up the nerve chapter stuff, the brainy stuff. So that's this week. And then I'm not there. I'm not here next week. So I want to briefly touch on what we're going to do next week. Again, individually, I can be available. I just can't do the class thing. So then we go into uh, the latter portion. We go into the respiratory system. We go into the digestive system. And those are, at the end of the day, compared to the nervous system, fairly straightforward the breathing we need to talk about you know what actually the function is of the respiratory system you know get oxygen to our blood and then from the blood get the oxygen into the cells and then from there we use the oxygen to make energy atp so that is quite an important thing uh, to have oxygen go into the system um, and uh, we have and, and that's where you see that here, respiration is a term we use for that. We have an external respiration where the oxygen goes into, this, into the blood. And then we have an internal respiration where the oxygen goes from the blood into the cells. And so that's, that's where we get into this terminology. And then, you know, we look at the different parts of the anatomy, the nose, stuff, pharynx, larynx we have sounds we make we make voice we have voice creation in the respiratory system uh that is a very important function and so we talk a little bit about that a little bit about how the sound the vocal cords vibrate and how that opening this is a cross section going through here how the opening opens more or less will you know and make the, the cords more or less tense and that will change the pitch so that's kind of interesting to learn a little bit about that and then from there, we go into the lower, into the lungs proper, uh, up until the voice box, the, 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 the larynx, um, the food and the air are shared together. But once we get through here, then the food goes down in the back and the esophagus and uh, the air goes down into the trachea in the front. And so the vocal cords are right here. Everything else then is long. So we get into the trachea. And from that's when the, the tube is a one tube. And what's interesting about the trachea is this, the ring that, that there's cartilage in the tube because air can't push a tube open. That's way too difficult for if we would have to think about having to do that. But in the, in the 
in the back of the trachea is where we have the esophagus go down. And the esophagus is simply a food, uh, a muscular tube because the food or liquid will open that no problem. And what's interesting, what you can see here, unfortunately, is, is, is these rings are only in the front. They're not in the back. They call them horseshoe shaped rings. And in the back, they're open because when we eat, the, the esophagus has to be able to push into the trachea in the back. And uh, that way the food can go down on the liquid and it doesn't have to ripple down and you know, jump over the little, little cartilage ring. So that's kind of interesting there. And then from the trachea, we go into the bronchi and the bronchi also have cartilage in it. Again, we need to keep those um, airways patent or open. And then of course they get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then we get into the alveoli, which is the lungs proper. The alveoli right here. So see, you still see a little bit of cartilage here. That's supposed to be cartilage. Oh no, look at that. That's supposed to be smooth muscle. Sorry about that. Cartilage probably stops around here in the terminal bronchial. Um, and then from, from there where the bronchial stop and see here, you see respiratory bronchial. That means we start having respiration and we get into the alveoli. And then the alveoli is where we have the air exchange where the oxygen gets from the air atmosphere, so to speak, into the blood. That's why you have all these blood vessels hanging around here. And so that's the external respiration that happens there. So that's kind of really cool. Um, a little backup. We have lungs here. Um, obviously, we have um, a few lobes to the lung. We have three lobes on the right and two lobes on the left because we got the cardiac impression. The heart is here, so it's a little bit pushed to the side. Um, and what's interesting about the lungs is they are attached to the chest wall right here. So this is the chest wall with the ribs here. And the, the lungs have a membrane, a serous membrane. And, 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 and that membrane is actually a continuous one membrane that goes all the way around on the outside and then on the inside. It's one membrane. And so there's a space inside of here that, that has no opening. And so that space in there has, um, has, has liquid in it. It's not really a space, it's a potential space. It just shows as a space. It's called the pleural cavity here, but it's not really a cavity. It's, it's really liquid in it. And what happens though, it can suction then the lungs, that the inner membrane onto the chest wall. And when we breathe, what ends up happening is we move the chest wall or also the diaphragm here, and the lungs come with it. The lungs are attached to those membranes and they inflate by being pulled open as the chest wall moves or the diaphragm. Does that make sense a little bit? Or am I like just blabbering along here? Makes sense. Makes okay. sense. It kind of makes sense. Okay, good. I know I have a little hard time explaining myself today, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but I think that's really freaking cool kind of how that works, you know? Um, and then, then when we move forward, then we, have, then we have to figure out how to get that air in and out of the lung. And we call that ventilation of the lung. And so inspiration and then expiration. And as you can see here, at that point, then we talk about moving the rib cage and the diaphragm to actually inflate the lungs. And that's why they are attached. So that's kind of neat. So there we got these muscles. That's good. Um, and we talked about not yet. And then this here explains the gas exchange from the alveoli, which we've seen before in a, a bigger slide, but then how that the oxygen goes into, um, into, into the red blood cells in the blood. And also as a byproduct from oxygen, once we, once we make the ATP, the oxygen becomes carbon dioxide. Uh, and we need to breathe that out and get rid of that. And that's also described here, how we get the carbon dioxide. Most of that is actually not on the red blood cell. Most of that is dissolved in plasma. Uh, and then how that gets breathed, goes into the alveoli and we get rid of it as a gas. And so that's breathing it out. So that's kind of neat there. And then we talk a little bit about carbon monoxide po poisoning or hypoxia. The thing with carbon monoxide is that's like, you know, the, the stuff coming out of the car. Um, the problem with that is it has such a high affinity to the hemoglobin, much higher than, than the oxygen does alone. And so 
uh, from from that perspective, then all the hemoglobin space is is taken up with a strong magnet that attaches to it, so to speak, and the oxygen has no place to go, and so and so that becomes a poisoning then because we do not have an ability for the oxygen to go into the body, and that's a problem. It becomes deadly. Hypoxia, hypo means less than, so that's a not enough oxygen in the system. All right, and then we finish up that chapter by talking about the breathing control, uh, neurological control. And a lot of those <clears throat> functions that are unconscious, that are autonomic, what we just talked about, are down here in the brainstem area, brainstem, pons, medulla stuff. Um, um, and so when you look at the lungs, what we, what we have to consider is we have to consider how deep do we breathe and we have to consider how fast do we breathe. So those are the two things we need to measure, and we can we can do the 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 breathing, the breathing in. We can we stimulate with the nerve, and then we have reflexes in stretch reflexes inside the lungs, and that stops the inhalation. Um, and so and then the other thing we gotta we gotta regulate is the 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 the, the amount how many breaths do we have in a um, in a minute, and so that's all regulated down here. So that's interesting on that front and that closes out that chapter and then we got one more to go you guys are very attentive if you have any questions just speak up but then we do digestion so now we have the oxygen now what else we need to make energy we need food stuff and so we talk about that how are we going to get these nutrients coming into the system uh and so yeah we have to talk about the food the whole food tube will start with the mouth again we have then the salivary gland that come in and then from there we go into first the pharynx which is the shared air food water liquid stuff area and then the esophagus which is after we separate the air from the food and the liquid and the esophagus then connects to the stomach and the stomach is where we start digesting um well the interesting thing about the, when we talk digestion uh, we talk that's actually the process of breaking down food. Um, it's not the next process is, is then absorption. That's the process of getting the food particles into the bloodstream. And so digestion is breaking down the foods. And so we can have that be done by um, physical, mechanical, we call that mechanical digestion. That's something like like chewing your food. Um, or also when you look at the stomach, when there's the stomach, they massages the food as well. That's also mechanical digestion. Um, um, peristalsis, which is the food moving through the tube. That's also part of mechanical digestion. And then we have chemical digestion. And that's your saliva, for example. That's in here, the glands up in here. They, they, squirt, um, they, they contain um, enzymes that break down the different foods. And in the mouth, you start breaking down the sugary stuff. You have amylase. And that's interesting. If you actually eat a savory sandwich and you chew it like long, 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 it becomes a little sweet. The bread will release the sugars. The amylase will release the sugars and you can taste that. Um, and then down here in the stomach is when we start digesting protein. That's why in the stomach you have, you have hydrochloric acid coming out. So it's really, really strong acid that helps destroy the protein structures and, and, and then break the foods down the, 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 the carbohydrates you got to break down to get the glucoses into the system, the sugars, the, the, the proteins you got to break down to get the amino acids going into the system. And then we use those mostly for building blocks to create muscles and stuff like that. We can use them for energy too, but you know, that's where we get into the Atkins diet. It takes actually energy to, to, die, to, to use protein for um, energy as an energy source. It takes more energy to, to transfer the amino acids so we can use it as ATP producers. So that's kind of why that is interesting a little bit and why an Atkins diet, for example. Would. And then as we leave the stomach, we get into the duodenum and that's the first part. And that's where we get a lot of enzymes from the pancreas right here. The pancreas has to do with the insulin and glucagon. We talked about that in the, endo, um, in the endocrine system, but then also a lot of digestive juices come out of here. A lot of enzymes that then break down all the different food groups right in here in the duodenum. And then from the duodenum, which is part of the small intestine already, we get into the bigger part of the small intestine. We get into, first we get into the jejunum, 
And the jejunum is where we do a lot of absorption of food molecules into the bloodstream. And then from there, most of them go to the liver for processing, which is why the liver is right here. The fatty stuff, the, the lipid stuff is, is a different structure. It's like oil and vinegar. And that um, uh, gets absorbed and goes actually into the bloodstream. It then gets to the liver for processing once it's inside the bloodstream. Um, so it, it's a different type of, it's, sorry, that it goes first through the heart and all of that, and then it goes to the liver. The other foods go directly from the gut to the liver. They have its own, there's its own, um, oh, its own um, vascularity for that. And then from there, we get into the ileum. The ileum is the last part of the small intestine. And we, as we get to the, to the latter part, we more and more absorb liquids and water and less and less foods. The foods are uh, mostly absorbed in the jejunum. Um, and then from there, we get into the large intestine. And that's just the one that goes around the stomach, basically, for up and over and down. And then afterwards, we get sigmoid colon, the, the large intestine is also known as the colon, sigmoid colon, uh, rectum, and then the anus. What's well, interesting, I think, here, I, when I had my first kid, we learned baby massage, and, you know, when the kids have colic, for example, which is really a pain for everybody, not just the kid and also the parent, but when you do massages, you want to massage and move the gas in the baby, and you want to massage in this direction, and when you start massaging, you first want to push this down here and go on the left side of the baby's belly and go down and then and then you so you move the gas down here so it can't come out and so it doesn't because the, the thing was the thing in the gut what hurts is the is the expansion it's the stretching that hurts in the gut that's a pain signal and that we all know that when we have stomach pain um, um and then once you push this down then you can back up and go across and down and move the gases in here forward. And then after you do that a couple, three times or so, and then you start moving up and over and down, and then you can go in circles and then you massage the baby's belly. So that can be very helpful. We learned that early on when I was in massage school. So I just wanted to, it's not difficult to do. Anywho, so that was the overview there. So we go through deeper, we all have in the mouth, we also talk about the teeth a little bit, about the salivary glands. We talk about here the process of swallowing, deglutition, which is an interesting process. It's partially conscious and partially unconscious, uh, getting the food from the mouth to, to the esophagus. Then we talk about the esophagus a little more. The gullet, that's also a name. I like that name, gullet. Peristalsis is uh, how the, it's, it's like a, you're thinking of a worm going forward. Peristalsis is how you get the food going through this tube. And so it doesn't get stuck somewhere. And, and so what, what happens is you squeeze, you squeeze. When you look at the muscular layer in the gut tube, you have a long layer and you have a circular layer. And so you squeeze the circular layer closed. And then, and then, and then you, you contract the longitudinal layer and you can slowly move that forward that way. Something like that. It's, that's what we call peristalsis. Another term they also use is segmentation uh, a little bit. When they squeeze the circular layer, the food gets smaller and smaller, and that's what is referred to that. Not sure I mentioned that in here or not. All right, and then the other thing that I thought, well, the stomach, we talked about that a little bit. The stomach has three muscle layers. That's why the stomach can talk to us. And look at that, P two to three liters of gastric juices of a pH of one to a half to two. You put that thing on the skin, it's going to burn a hole into the skin. It's that acidic. So that's crazy. That's why when we get heartburn and some of that gets, comes out of here, some of that gas comes out of here into the esophagus and burns. That hurts. And that's heartburn right there. Anywho, stomach, payers patches. Oh, that's also really, really cool. The, if you think about um, uh, pathology is coming into the system. We breathe them in. Obviously, we know about that with COVID and all that. But also, a lot of it comes through the gut. And so the gut has a really, really big, large immune system on its own self. And, and that's in payers patches. And so what, what happens is you get a food particle that, direct, that the uh, uh, nervous, I mean, the immune system recognizes as a problem, an antigen right in here. And so what, what then the cells start making, when they recognize that, they then create antibodies and they can, you know, squirt them right into the gut and neutralize the problem right in there. It doesn't even come to the system. And so that's why 
uh, the immune system in the gut is really, really important. So it can neutralize the bad stuff. The other thing that's really interesting is, you know, the, the gut. When we don't talk about that in, in regular anatomy, uh, the gut has more nerve connections to the back part of the brain, the, 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 the most part of the brain, than the conscious thinking part of our brain has to the, all of the other parts of the brain. And so the, 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 the salamus, you know, those parts, the more unconscious. So that's very, very interesting if you think about it. So the, when they say, follow your gut, that really means something. That's not, you know, and so I think it is important over time to learn, for us to learn how to listen to the gut. Not always everything has to go through the forehead and the thinking in the, because it's, it's, it's not always the best way of solving problems. And the reason is the neurology is there. We can actually show that at this point. Anywho, so that was kind of cool, I think. And then the large intestine, um, or a couple of things in the large intestine. Well, the thing is that vermiform appendix is very important. And the reason why that's very important is because if that thing gets infected, you want to have the thing get taken out because if it bursts, you're going to have yourself a real problem on the hand because then you have the gut go to the inside of the body. And so I guess I have to back up a little bit um, and probably did that early on in the semester where, where I talk of us being a donut, basically, uh, because, because we have a mouth and the whole gut tube and then we have a, a poop thing coming out at the end. And so all, everything from the mouth to the, to the anus is one tube that's actually connected to the exterior on the world. And it's not really inside, inside of the body that way. So we call that topological exterior, the gut tube. And so the problem with an appendix bursting is the fact that we get that external material, all the bacteria, all the you know, dirt from the world that is inside us too a little bit, and we have it be okay with um, the immune system and all that. But then that gets to the inside of the body, which, which, is, ster which is sterile, and it should stay sterile. And so then that becomes really a problem. And so when you have an appendix, you have a pain down in here, you check that out. And one thing we, we do when we learn in, in, most, in Cairo school is, is you go halfway between the belly button and the ASIS in the front here, the hip part, and you push, slowly push in there. It's called McBurney's, McBurney's point. You slowly push in and then you take it out fast you let go fast. And if that hurts like hell, you go to the hospital because then that most likely indicates there is something wrong with your appendix. So that's another one that I want um, people to kind of know about because I lost, I lost the mother-in-law because she had a burst appendix and that wasn't fun. Anyway, um, in the larger test, the other thing we have going on is we have these epiploic appendages. These are just little fat tags that come along. And we also have these these little house things, they look like houses and they call them house truck. Um, and <clears throat> then we have the tinea coli and the tinea coli is a little sliver of muscle that lays around on top here and creating these house straws actually. House straw, you know, I just remember, you know, looks like little houses, that's how I remember that name. Um, that's about it from that perspective, I think. Um, large intestine, peritoneum. The peritoneum is similarly similar to what I talked about in the lungs. It's also this continuous, like the pleura, this one membrane. But in the gut, it doesn't have to attach the gut to the chest wall, or you know, it's not like the lung there. But what the peritoneum does, it organizes the whole gut because it's got a lot, a lot of gut in there, and it's got to be organized. Otherwise, it, you know, if it gets twisted, that's not good. We know that when it does happen, that's really a problem for for people. <clears throat> so that's the peritoneum. Then we have a little bit on the pancreas, which is um, creates, creates the pancreatic juices, those digestive juices that help break everything down. Then the liver, a little bit about the liver, talking about <clears throat> how, you know, it, 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 it is created in this structure and then it filters stuff and, and cleans it and you know the liver is does a lot of does a lot of functions it's a, a really um cool organ it's the largest gland we have in the body 
we got to be nice to it. It takes a lot of heat and, you know, process a lot of medications and alcohol and probably toxic environmental stuff. And so it's, 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 it's good to treat it well and be grateful for it. And then the gallbladder, the cool thing about the gallbladder is it's, it, it, it makes bile or it actually the liver makes bile and then the gallbladder stores the bile. That's why it's right here. And then from there, it goes, it goes into the duodenum. And what it does, it helps make the fat into small little, little small fat globules and not the big, big, big fat piece that nobody can absorb or the body couldn't absorb. So you think, I think of, I think of, of, the, of the gallbladder kind of like soap and dispersing the fat, the big fat and breaking it down so it can survive. And it doesn't survive in the, in the liquid, the watery environment, but it gets trapped. And then once it's, once it's trapped in a small enough space, it can be absorbed and then it gets into the bloodstream. So that's the gallbladder, helps with fat absorption. And then let's see what's left here. Oh, this is just talking about the breakdown of the digestion, how we take what in. Um, again, you don't have to memorize all of that. I just want you to, you know, learn and then go to the test review to know what you need to know for the test. And again, my tests are all open book. So don't feel bad if you're using material on the test. I'm not going to, you're not going to do any, you're not doing anything wrong with that. Okay. The other thing I did is I um, opened all these down here on for you, but everything else now is open. So we have this week, next week, and then we got two more weeks going. We do a little nutrition, which is kind of cool, I think. And then we do uh, the kidneys, the urinary system. And then after that, we'll have us, um, some reproductive systems go through that. And uh, the end, the chapter on the embryology, which I think is kind of cool to have a little bit of time for that. All right. I think I've done enough blabbing. How are you guys doing? Any questions, comments, concerns? No, no. Everything good, Professor. Huh? <laughs> After Everything all, good. Just listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Professor. The um, slide and the presentation, we have to uh, voice uh, over it. That means that uh, we have to. Uh, talk and make a recording ahead, not in the classroom, right? Not during yeah, the you classroom? Make it, yeah, no, no, you make it, you make a video, basically. Oh. Oh. So you make a video like, like I make a video of what we just do today. And then I post that video. And so, okay. and so, you know, I, I have that room, the, the Zoom room I created for the class. Yes, you, I see that. You guys could use that one. You know, on the home button here, oh, cool. this one down okay. here, you can go use that one. And then yeah. all you need to know, the other thing you need to know is how to share your screen. Uh -huh. And I have it though on that, on that Zoom link, everybody can share the screen, just only one person at a time. Um, okay. And then the only other thing you need to know is how to record. Okay. But if one of your group knows that, we're good. And if not, you reach out to me. And then the other problem is this. If it's your own account, you get the recording onto your account when you record it. If it's, my, if it's this room in here, I get the recording. So then I have to process it and upload your recording. And you just have to inform me and tell me when it's done, you know, or something like that. And on the, and on the, um, on the, hold on, let me share again, sorry. On the description yeah, it's challenging. I, I have done a presentation using a slide and then like talk like what we are doing right now. Uh -huh. And but I haven't done the recording, so I was like, I'm just a hesitant. Oh, how's this gonna go? Well, I, you know, that's I, I think uh, uh, we're all a little uh, experience experimenting with it and and, and maybe a little. Uh, hesitant and I know and, and it is not easy to do presentations but I do want you guys yeah. to go through it and mm -hmm. do it because it's extremely good practice to do some of that you know and and in college you got yeah. multiple 
and public speak. I mean, when I first came to America, I had to take a public speaking class. I didn't speak any English. It was hilarious. Um, you know, and so don't don't be too hard if your English is not that great. That's fine. Most of us are ESL people, or or you know, at least half of us. And so if that's if if that's a little difficult, that's that's okay. We still have to do it and just um, get through it with it and 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 mm -hmm. teach each other. And you know, it will be fine. I think you guys will do phenomenal. So what I've seen so far our the presentations, group I'm really proud of you guys. Thank you. So our group has a three people. So um, you said less than 10 minutes is like two to three minutes in yeah, one person? About two okay. to three minutes per person, you know. Okay. We, just, okay. we, that, we make sure it's not too long. And also, you know. Okay. Some of the points, can we just read off from the our presentation, like where we put it on? What we put? Yeah, but I do okay. want you to read this one here and and work your presentation over a little bit to try to teach using the pictures you know and have the texts the words can be there too but try not to just read a slide because that's boring okay yeah <laughs> you know try to use the picture to teach use that as a little bit of a you know that's why i also want to do it i can hopefully guide some of you so most of you probably know it much better than i do but but it's a process that, you know, it takes a little time and it's a little, you know, on the Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, hope so. <laughs> Thank you. I, no, it'll be fine. You have two weeks for that thing. Oh yeah, you have two weeks for this voiceover thing. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Well, that means everything else is clear, huh? Clear as mud. So we can slowly catch up the homework. Is that okay? I haven't done the last week. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the deadline is the last day of class. That's when the final week, when is that? In May sometime, at the end of May. I think the 27th. Oh, okay, thanks, thanks. Yeah, that helps. After that, that's it. Then the, the system closes for me too. And so until then, yeah, you can... You can be a little wiggly. That's fine. Uh, work ahead or catch up. Right, I open everything now. If somebody wants to work ahead a little bit, that's totally fine too. Um, just know the end date is the end date. And the presentations, I am picky with the dates because it's a group thing. Okay? Right, yeah. That's why I was focusing on presentation. Thanks. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah, and, and print the test review out and have that as your guide. All right, anybody else? Can I stay after and talk with you? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, bye guys. Thank you. All right, if nobody else, we're all good. Have a wonderful two. Next week, no Zoom. Be aware of that, okay? Okay, thank you, Professor. Professor. Have a good thank week. you so much. Have a good one and reach out if you need help. All right. All of you guys want to chat a little bit? Yes. All right. You okay if other people are there too? I don't know where the other people are. are you? Chelsea, you're here too? Bruce? They might just be, be not paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, could you, I want to make sure that you got my PowerPoint. I, I sent it during class just now. Oh. for my assignment because i want to i want to make sure my video oh my email or where did you send it to uh i sent it i resubmitted it in the oh okay let me look i know i i made a mistake when i did this thing as a group thing i mean not as a group project but the upload yeah I know I don't I don't understand some of these functions. <laughs> I'm learning as well. This learning time. by doing, right? Exactly. Okay. All right, there you are. Okay. So I sent you Oh, nice. So what I sent you um on Friday was um what okay. I'm going to say for each slide. No, that's perfect. And that's actually what I want you to do 
as a process over what I wrote down there for students to do. That's what I have to do. That looks wonderful. So I haven't gotten any, I, my group is radio silent. So this, this PowerPoint is mine. Um, I was- uh, But then, you know, but Sonia has something too. Right. So I reached out to everybody saying, hey, let's collaborate. Cause I didn't want to like do all this work on like the, the PowerPoint design and stuff. If it's not going to be cohesive, I wanted all of us to like kind of have the same theme. Uh, yeah, I know. But... Um, so I reached out to everybody last Monday to say, hey, um, can we can we do a Zoom and collaborate? Mm -hmm. And nobody has gotten back to me. So not even telling you anymore. No. Oh, God. So well, I'm going to send out wonderful. I'm going to send out a group text because I'm only supposed to be doing question number two. Mm hmm. So that's why I like I only did a tiny bit for question one and three just to fill in that gap until they bring. No, their I think together. it's very and it's gonna be working nice with Sonyu's. I I haven't heard anything from anybody else either. I have a feeling half of these people don't really do anything on that okay. front. I mean I don't know. I shouldn't be judgy on that since <laughs> I can't run after everybody. <laughs> so, but is it too much? No, it's, it looks wonderful. It's okay. Yeah, especially if him, you and him do it, or even, you know, I don't know if you guys don't work together, maybe at the end you do, you each do one yourself. I made that next assignment, not a group thing. So everybody can just upload whatever. Okay. Uh, in, you know, then we just play, play with that because I looked at his too, and this is pretty good um, too, coming along with nice pictures and all that. Because that alone as a standalone, if you do this as a standalone, it's extremely informative for people, you know? Okay. And All right. Need to know about the stuff. And actually, you know what? I wanted to see if I can send you this book on smudging. Yeah, I would like to dive a little bit more in there, but I just. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, not for your own interest, I think, too. Yeah, because I just I didn't want to like overload and like overwhelm with. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I have ten slides and my groupmates only have two, like I I want it to. Be. No, yeah, but Sonia is also fairly um, like yours. The other one, I don't think the other ones did anything. Okay. Um, where is that darn thing? Hold on, because I got this really cool book, and it's an ebook, and I'm not totally sure you can open it, but I hope. So let me. I'm sorry, I'm a little slow here. Huh. What a good email sent for me. Yes. Where should I send it? Uh, so the easiest one would be Kath, Catherine, Katharine, K A T H A R I N E Shepherd. Wait, wait, wait. K A T H A R. Uh huh. I N E. Uh huh. Shepherd, S H E P A R D. Uh huh. 415 at Gmail. 415. So we have Katarine. Wait, no. Oh, an E and then Shepherd with one P. Okay. Let's see if you can get that. Okay. Um, No subject. Oh shoot, I didn't send it without a subject. But it should be it's a PDF doc. Okay. Uh, and that if you can open it, I think that'd be really cool. It's not a difficult read, it's for patients, but it's from physical <laughs> therapists that wrote it. So it's it's very good stuff. So that might be cool. All right. Okie dokie. Hi. Cutie. Huh unhappy right now yeah it's her nap time yeah, I, know. Oh, I just don't talk to this <laughs> i just i just got it okay okay cool so I'll see if you can open it or not but you know let's just you guys are doing great and if you can't connect with Sonia, then just do your own thing and he does his thing hopefully you can yeah i'll reach the out to the group uh, whatever I don't i'll reach know. out via text and and see if we can collaborate yeah 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 okay all right, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank so, you um, so, um, but it's it's okay to to 
all the writing that I did for the slides, I still want to tweak that a little bit too. Say that again. The what I'm going to say, what I uh -huh. originally submitted, I still am tweaking that as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just keep working through it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But you're okay. doing if you're doing what you're doing so far, you'd look it's good. It's very okay. good. Okay, yeah, awesome. Yeah. But you know, what I do is yeah, every day they like, yeah, I read it once for a couple of days or so, and then it flows a little more, and then and then it comes together nicely at that point, you know. Yeah. Okay. Thank good. you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.